amazing. This is this is the I, first time in history we're actually starting on time. I don't believe it. This is actually. I'm going to take this as a scary it's sign of 2016. 2016 is going to be different. Yeah. Let me uh, let me ring it in. Welcome to the 2016 to first two and a half hour show. We think Simon over there. Say hi. Oh, damn, sounds. Oh, I knew something was going on. Welcome to there we go. What's going on? Well, it's it was this close to perfect. This close, you came well, this close. It's perfect. If it, it had been perfect, it would have been perfect. It wouldn't have we been. Would perfect. Have, we would have, have to have ended the show. Ironic. That would have been if, if it had been perfect. We would have to have declared an end to the series after yes. all these years. Yes. That would have been. Let's perfect this. That's it. It's over. So, so a nice monkey hat there. Um, well, as close as I could find to a monkey. Yeah, same here. It, 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 it's kind of a monkey. I tried, but um, hey, um, by the way, I, there's something new here. I don't know if you know this. There's something that says it says moderators. You you now use a single moderator list for all your live streams and events. Previous moderators have been added automatically. What is that about? Do I just? I don't know. Does that mean I can kill people? I don't know. I'm just gonna close it. It's a, I just got it. Okay, so I got it. I don't know what that means. Okay, I'm not. I don't think I'm a moderator. Am I moderate? No, I'm not. So I, you haven't oh, made me moderator. What do I do? I put H. What's your name? Maybe he called. My name and give me the give me the power. Oh, sorry, I'm on. You have frankly, I'm not really gonna be able to keep up anyway. It works. You're there. Okay. Hi guys, welcome. Ooh, for Thanks for the five thumbs down. Yeah, yeah, big, big, big. Oh, that's impressive. Happy New Year to the big five thumbs down. Yes, for all the impotent people who can do nothing about me but thumb my video down. You're impotent. Here, I drink to you. I drink to you. Hey. Who don't show your faces on camera and thumb down my video. It happens to everybody. I think. Sorry, here anyway. I gave you a little attention. I hope you. I hope I just gave you a little chubby for mentioning your, your impotence. Hey, um, but that's not we're we're not here to talk about the trolls, yet. <laughs> we'll talk about them later. Twenty sixteen, twenty fifteen. Are we here to talk about? Yes. Yes. The first time we've talked in a while, actually. So this is good. We're fresh. Yes. Did you do anything what? special? Did you went. You went to Australia, right? Is that secret? That's right. I mean, Sorry. <laughs> No, 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 it's no, no, no secret. I was I was in Brisbane over Christmas and New Year. I'm sorry. How how was it with all those dangerous Aussies? Were you, are you okay? The Aussies were okay. I mean, everything in Australia pretty much is just like designed to kill you. You know, to kill you. Yes. Um, I I've been back a few times now. The only thing I really have trouble coping with now is just you know the way that the toilets flush spinning the other way. It it, it completely. Oh, come on, you pay attention to that. No, and it's actually not true, but uh, you know, I, I, I like to pretend it is because a lot of people believe it. Uh, no, it was lovely. Uh, nice sun, su sunny summer weather, of course, every day in the pool. It's a nice way to spend some way Christmas is supposed to be spent with barbecues and pools. Hey, uh, for 2016, I am blocked everybody off all my channels. Again? <laughs> How many did you have blocked? Um, I think like a thousand, maybe two. A thousand people blocked. Well, that, that's pretty much like uh, Castro letting you know all of the prisons out and go, going to Miami isn't it actually more like 200 but <laughs> but one of them was the same guy like a hundred one a hundred of accounts of one person so I don't, I don't okay, know well, we, know, we know at least that there were five <laughs> <laughs> well um, congratulations all the unblocked people if they had to block one person because he kept asking everyone he told everyone I'm gonna suck your I'm gonna lick your toes bitch he kept writing that to people so I, I had to block him because uh, I'm sure he thought it was funny at the time <laughs> But he yeah. did it over a period of a whole week, so I said, "Okay, that's enough." Yeah, yeah, Victor Castro. That's uh, that's what you're. And Phoenix seven eight seven is expressing surprise that he wasn't on your block list. Who? Uh, Phoenix seven eight seven. Heard of him? That son of a bitch. No. He's okay, he's a nice guy actually. Oh, but, yeah, yeah, I think so. Phoenix, you're a nice guy, and let's yeah. just let's just clean clean the slate for 2016. <laughs> <laughs> you. He put up a good video tonight using my music, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to totally. Uh, I think it's one of the best videos ever. Although I also know that you made an awesome video that I'm. I've got to actually open and ready to watch after this. Well, it's not so much an awesome video; it's, a, it's an awesome attempt. At <laughs> you put a lot of love into it, and that's the important thing. I put thing. a lot of love into it. I did it, and I think it's uh, a lot of people said it's the best video I ever made, um, including the one with Hannah Minks. You know, it was, it was yeah. even better than that one, which is and that is high praise. So. Indeed. Well, I'm, I'm drinking my Glen Livet that my wife gave me for uh, for Christmas. Yeah, I'm drinking my Edelhaus that I bought from a vending machine today. 
<laughs> stuff. I actually get that all the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and, and the bottles are easily collapsible. It's very eco-friendly. Yeah. Um, but to, to Australia was good. Um, no yeah. problem. Oh, I do have some news about a certain user. <laughs> what kind of what you mean? It's, it's, relevant. it's relevant. So there's this crazy user out there called Wing Bull One. Okay, new new name to me. Okay, this is his this is his crime. I'm gonna shout you out for him because he's insane and he's going around telling people that I have IRS problems and I'm being investigated by the IRS. Okay, I don't know yeah. what that's, that's that's quite clever. I don't know why he would think that, but but um, here's the thing about him. He he hates Australia. Yeah. Has I checked his. Uh, well, so he's not completely insane. No, well, he's completely insane for this reason. He's. He, I checked his Gmail or what's it called, Google Google account, yeah. about a month ago, and he had posted literally, copy pasted literally the same diatribe about Australia on like two hundred different videos. Wow! And that's that's a little. I mean, when I saw that, I thought, okay, this is like, this is just like Jack Nicholson, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. I mean, I, he, I, this guy's crazy. I swear it wasn't me. Hands off anymore. <laughs> But my question for you is, what's the deal? What does, is that a common thought by some certain people? Why does why do you think this guy hates Australia so much? And you, jokingly, you know, made comments about it. But. I'll put it on No, of course, all of my mocking of Australia isn't just because, believe me, oh, whatever I say about Australia, I have received ten thousand times more in my time as a New Zealander in Australia. You mean like um, viral diseases or? Pretty, yeah, pretty much everything. Um, <laughs> You know, uh, Australians like to make fun of other people. It's part right. of the national character. And, you I know, like making fun of people, Canadians because no one makes fun of them. I think they, they feel left out, so I think we should make fun of them. Well, you know, so New Zealanders, well, New Zealanders don't really fight back. That's, that's part of the thing. And when you grow up in a very nationalist family, you know, I, I was brought up with a dad who was very anti-Australian. Really? You know, he's a pretty married one. Yes, apart from my sister and my mum. Uh, <laughs> well, I never figured that out. When I, I have actually. a black friend. I'm not racist. Like that's I'm, right. Well, it's actually, it's actually. I married a black person, have black children. It becomes more credible if you say it that way, doesn't it? But they're still actually racist. That's the funny thing. Yeah, it still be racist, I guess. Uh, so anyway, um, well, so all of my stuff with Australia isn't isn't just, and I am, of course, just just to make sure we're totally clear. I mean, I, I identify as half Australian, as weird as that is. Mm. I mean, there's certain things about Australia I can't. You told your wife that you're half Australian. Does she know this? Oh yeah, whenever whenever she sees me being obnoxious or um, lacking uh, shame or uh, self awareness, she she says you're acting Australian again. <laughs> uh, because she's seen New Zealanders and she doesn't figure out how I can call myself a New Zealander because I can be a bit Australian. New Zealanders, I think, are like the the uh, Canadians of the. Of yeah, they're very much. I think that's a good parallel. Yeah, so, really nice coming, really like so. So coming back, why would people hate Australia? I don't know. I can't. Like, yeah, that's what I'm asking. I don't really. I mean, like I say, I have met just like I've met some psycho. Well, actually, it's Russell Crowe. That's all. Well, he, he's an Australian. We, 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 we right. They can. Oh, that's right. That's why. That's right. He's yeah, actually born in New Zealand, so we kind of have a debate. Oh. Australians are trying to make him New Zealand again, but we, we, we are totally saying no, no, no. He changed his citizenship, and we don't want him back. Mm. Um, but yes, well, the thing is, is I've met a few really psychopath Canadians. You know, hey, they're just a small number, but there are a few who are really anti-American Canadians. There is that phenomenon of uh, anti-Australian New Zealanders. Again, they're really super rare, but you know they've had some sort of really bad experience right, that can right. make them like that. But to tell you the truth, I've never met a really seriously anti-Australian person who wasn't a Kiwi. And even among Kiwis, honestly, it's like it's like a couple in a hundred. Unfortunately, my dad is one of them. What about British people? Do they kind of make fun of Australia? Or, or they something? make fun of Australia, but they don't hate Australia. They wouldn't hate Australia enough to put like a hate rant against Australia so much that you know, yeah, they they, they make, Oliver often makes jokes about Australia. Yeah, I mean, you know, British and Australians like to have banter. They like to they like to tease one another. Like Austra like Argentinians and well, maybe you don't know this, but Argentinians and Spanish. I I know there's a funny thing. I don't exactly understand what the dynamic is with Argentinians and Spanish. When I was in Spain, there were lots of TV shows making fun of Argentinians, like the the and accent and everything. Argentina, a lot of, a lot of them yeah. Spanish. Yeah, they, they did like Polak, you know, Polish jokes. Yeah, oh, I, I'm familiar with them, but yeah. I almost felt like Polak was a bad word, but it's not. It's just a nationality. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, it, 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 it has a kind of a derogatory use, doesn't it, in, in humor? But well, I no, is is it is Polak wrong? I think Polak is fine. Is Polish better? Is it? Is there a big difference? To tell you the truth, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Polak and she's Polish. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's like it's like uh, the South South uh, South Park where, the, where Kenny says I'm Jewish to to Cartman. And he goes, "Don't say that about yourself." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I am Jewish. He goes, "No, no, you're my friend. You don't have to say." Oh, sure, you, you, but you mean like Korean people? You know, they call themselves Hanguk Min, mm -hmm. and you know people heard heard Guk in in Hanguk Min, and they called them Guks. And of course, Guks is an inappropriate term. Mm -hmm. uh, but Hanguk Min is the is the word. That's I, mean, where I, came from. I didn't know that. Yeah. No, Guk. I mean, uh, that, that that that's what Korea is. That's, Kuk is a koku, you know, like a uh, kang koku mm -hmm. is hang kuk me. It means oh. the same. So, so why didn't, what did we call, we, we called Vietnamese Charlie, that was a derogatory word. Yeah. And the, the Koreans. Well, at least, unless you're actually Charlie, in which case I'd like to apologize. Just right, 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 Charlie. Right, say your name was derogatory just now. And Charlie's yeah. that guy as well. But what about, um, what about Japanese? What do we call them? Just Japs? That was it? Japs or Nips or I guess, you know. Nips. That was the. Uh, well, by the way, just before we go further down the slippery slope, yeah. <laughs> I'll figure out uh, racist labels. You're talking about language and, and you know the way people act, but if you really well, want to know, you need to dehumanize your enemy. That's why we do that, of course. They must yeah. have called the So again, if there's someone who hates Australians, it's possibly because Australians are probably the world's foremost authorities in the English language on racially derogatory terms for just about everybody on the planet. They have, they know, you know. done for Canadians. <laughs> I've heard this one. I've heard that Americans sometimes think. I, I read some sort of some somebody posted something on Facebook which said uh, uh, Americans. I know Americans think that Canuck is like a derogatory term for Canadians, but honestly, no Canadians oh. think it's derogatory. <laughs> it's the same. I've I've met um, French people and German people who think that Kiwi is like a derogatory term for New Zealanders. They hate really? Kiwi. Um, yes. <laughs> Victor uh, Charlie, of course, we see. Okay. Yeah, Victor Charlie. There you go. So I don't know. I mean, you know, but for me, oh, Aussies are cool, and the guy's obviously a psychopath if he hates Aussies and he posts rants everywhere. And it sounds like you know something that I've heard of people posting anti-Japanese stuff as well. Just obviously yeah. psychopath. We got a we got a question from the hippie Phoenix. He yeah. asks, "What's a derogatory word for British people?" I I think lime sucker is that a derogatory word? Lime sucker? I've never heard that one. Oh, limey. I'm sorry. Limey. 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 Uh, in, in Australia and New Zealand, uh, we use the word pom. pom. We call them poms. Um, the um and the french call them roast beefs and i asked why do you call them roast beefs and they said well they call us uh frogs because we eat frogs and they eat roast beef so we call them roast beef but i'm like but i like roast beef <laughs> but the french guys they like frogs so it's actually kind of all cool with everybody no, it doesn't make sense no it doesn't but they apparently whenever they really want to mock french they start saying cross beef and you know it's meant to be really who oh, we got them but i don't know but no for, for new zealand and australia we call them palms Here's, here's one last question about this language, and then we'll get to some news. For it's not really language, it's just how to abuse people. Uh, here's something interesting. Fanny pack in America. Yeah. A little bag you put on, it hangs over your ass. A little fanny pack, yes. Uh, in, in, Brit in England, fanny means vagina, apparently. Even in America, you, I, I, I've seen like 60 Minutes where they were using the word fanny. It was slang for fanny. I remember watching a 60 Minutes episode in the 1980s on child abuse where the, where the child was pointing at the doll and saying the fanny. I remember. To the vagina? Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's, it, no, no, it's really old-fashioned slang. It's kind of out of date now, but uh, you ask your – well, if you ask anyone like over 60 or 70 in America, it was like the old slang. But if you think about a fanny pack, it often does lie over the vagina. So. Well, if you have one, of course. I mean – Well, know. the one – people use the word on the front anyway. So. Yeah. Anyway. Um. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you clarified that. Thank Actually, you. I, I really want to pick your brain on a few subjects that mm -hmm. I know a little bit about. But my brain is at your what left of it is, is at your disposal. So I uh, picked this up. Well, a couple, couple things I picked up. A couple things I picked up. This one, this one was handed to me the other day. Of course, you know what this is about. Uh, Lysander forty five says fanny mint bottom. Not not a. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. The uh, the hydrogen bomb indeed. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, British people tell. Well, if you look it up, actually on the dictionary, it says UK vagina. So, the okay. Well, there you go. Yeah. Okay, so the hydrogen bomb. How how worried should we be here, Hiko? Should we move? We be moving to uh, I don't know Sweden. Well, from what I hear, it was six kilotons, right? It was like the same as there are that kind of mini bombs, and, and you know the whole thing about like hydrogen bombs is that they're meant to be like megaton, like you know, huge type bombs. So, mm -hmm. my first reaction was, you know, to to paraphrase. Um, Zoolander would be, would be to say, you know, what was this, a hydrogen bomb for ants? Um, you know, sure, I mean, this is the greatest scientific achievement of North Korea since they successfully landed a man on the sun last year. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd like to congratulate them on having successfully tested a, uh, a hydrogen bomb. Really 
Sorry? Did someone actually say they landed a... A man on the sun? The, the, I, I think it was actually a, um, an, an urban myth that there was a press release within North Korea claiming okay. to have landed a man on the sun. Okay. But a lot of people believed it. Uh, All right. But, you know, for me, it's not so much, you know, whether or, or not it was a hydrogen bomb. I mean, we know they, they can blow up little atomic bombs, and they've done it a couple of times now. It's just like, you know... And you the internet can build one if it just gets the plutonium, right? So, yeah, yeah. I mean, when they first did it, like, what was it, back in 1996 or 1999 or something like that, when they first tested one, it might have been even in 2000s that they first did it, there was like a big shock, right? In Japan, right. it was like major thing, you know, United Nations, and everyone's like, how do we, um, you know pay them money to stop the nuclear program and how do we start economic aid and bribe them <laughs> how do we fall into their trap how do we play right into their hands yeah yeah and, and then you know and they went along with that and then then the first thing to go wrong again or something that they didn't like they shut everything down they did another test and everyone got shocked again and this is like the fourth test now right so I, i'm beginning to think like this is pretty much just like a, a movie where they keep releasing sequels and they just keep having the same like Death Star just keep, keep keeps getting rebuilt over and over as, as the thing, and you know it, it kind of loses as as a narrative device. Mm -hmm. Just building a new Death Star every single movie it just makes you think you know your sense of crisis diminishes over time with it. So I don't know it just seems like I see two thousand and six it was pretty recent I guess. You know what? It was the nuclear program in the late nineties. It was when they had the, the nuclear power plant, and they should, they got paid to shut that down, and then they started it again. Anyway. But you're right. Okay. Two thousand six. I okay, get the first test. So it was a big shock. But I don't know. It's just like everyone's going through the motions of acting shocked and surprised, but no one really really cares. I think anymore. Mm. That's my kind of view on it. You know, I don't think it has much uh, material. I mean, so far as we're aware, they still don't have the means to put it on a rocket and deploy it, although they are advancing their rocket, and they, they will have the ability to nuke America one day. It doesn't seem like, like a very far, far away step for them. I mean, they, they've shot right. over Japan a couple of times, though, right? Yeah, but, you know, at the end of the day as well, are they really going to do it? I mean, we went through, you know, for having Russia with, you know, tens of thousands of missiles, megaton capacity, aimed at America for 50 years. And we got through that as well. And again, maybe we shouldn't be so relaxed about the idea of there being nuclear missiles all over the place. Um, but in the end of the day, I mean, the only purpose of the nuclear program there is to make sure that Kim Jong-un stays in charge. And no one's really trying to get rid of him at the moment, right? I mean, you know, America is focused on defending South Korea and China's focused on making sure North Koreans don't become refugees in China. But no one's really trying to get rid of the regime there, right? right. So, so long as... <laughs> they stay there, and so long as nobody's actually, you know, invades them and makes them think they have to press a button, you know, at the end of the day, it's just, uh, for them, it's just like diplomatic leverage, and I don't know, I mean, dipl diplomatic leverage for what? No, Nobody's going to invade them, so, mm. I don't know, I just think it's kind of, uh, it's kind of empty, and frankly, you know, for a country which can't afford to feed itself, um, I did actually post a blog this week on my solution to this crisis, and it was actually good advice, I thought, for the you regime over there. Don't steal from Trump, because he might sue you. Oh, yeah, no, 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 it wasn't, it wasn't one of Trump's ideas. Uh, I, not yet, well, anyway. I don't, I don't even follow, follow that. <laughs> what, yeah. what did he say, do you know? Sorry? What did Trump say? I remember, he, I, I know that, I saw some headline that he had oh, some question for that. I didn't really follow either. I'm sure he said we should have made them or something. Mm -hmm. um, no, 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 but I suggested that North Korea, you know, they're spending all of this money, all of these resources, I mean, they're spending half of the GDP on, mm -hmm. on developing these nuclear weapons, right? Mm -hmm. I think they should be investing in cows. Cows? Yeah. What I've explained this. How some people have lived this. Um, I, I think that the, the money being spent on plutonium and hiding the nuclear program and the centrifuges and everything, they could just spend it on cows, just buy every cow that can be put on a truck or a train. So basically, the far east of Russia and China, um, they should just try to find every cow. I don't think they're, sub they're subject to um, economic sanctions, you know, like nuclear technology, like computers and stuff, you can't send to North Korea. But mm -hmm. as far as I'm aware, there's no embargoes on sending cows there. Mm -hmm. So they should just buy as many cows as possible and, 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 and milk them all. Mm -hmm. and use the centrifuges and stuff, you know, for for, 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 for refrigerating the milk and turning it into ice cream mm -hmm. and offering everybody ice cream. Because seriously, I mean, at this point... You can be angry when you have ice cream. Exactly, exactly, seriously. You know, well, the world would lift the sanctions immediately if they were afraid that the free ice cream that they were going to get was going to melt, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, how could you have a bad image? I mean... 
even when you find out that the neighborhood ice cream truck guy was like a mass murderer or something, you still think, well, at least the ice cream was good. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, who who really, even even when you find out that they're like, like the ice cream man was the mass murderer, I'd probably still buy from him. If it was still, right. You're right. I mean, if he had the right flavors and he was just in front of your house, of course you get it. Yeah. Ice cream sandwich or something. <laughs> And the thing is, I, and you know, they do crazy things. Uh, Kim Jong Un's father invested in ost ostriches. You remember the, you, there was a big thing made about how he was investing in ostriches, as like super chickens. Uh huh. Uh huh. You know, because oh, like one, yeah. one ostrich, apparently the egg is like twenty times bigger than a, than a chicken. No, egg. it's fifty times bigger. Well, there you go. I actually, so, had one. I visit. I was invited to a school, a high school, where they actually cooked one. <laughs> it cost five thousand yen on the internet. Well, there you go. So you know, it, it's a good one. You can buy one. You can have one on the show. We could have we could have one on the show. And the, an ostrich. Our guest. <laughs> Today's guest, an ostrich. Uh, that could be interesting. That could be interesting. So, but you know, they, they tried this. They had this idea of, of replacing having, having ostriches for chickens, and that you'd solve the food problem. You could export for a lot of money and stuff like that. And of course, it didn't work because it turned out the ostriches just didn't like North Korea very much. But cows are already you know as a safe bet. Uh, it's a better return on the investment, I think. Huh. Plus, of course, you know, ice cream can be converted in small amounts into butter, which Japan desperately needs, and that's another thing which I was suggesting. You know, could, Japan needs butter. You could um, end the whole, you know, diplomatic uh, impasse between Japan and North Korea overnight if they just had the abductees bring the butter over to Japan. That would just fix everything. Two two birds with one that, egg. That's right. Right. Yeah, and and all you need is cows. I'm sorry, yeah. you're right. It's apparently it's 24 or so. It's closer, to not 50. I don't know why I thought it was 50. I must have mis misheard that. Maybe we had two eggs at our school. Well, you know, like I said, when it, when it comes to ostriches, don't mess with the master here. You know. Yes, you know you like this. <laughs> that. Another uh, another victory for the Hiko Hiko camp there. Yeah. Uh, let's, uh, let's let's hear some other news stories. Okay? Yes. Let's see if you know some of these. Okay. Yeah. Let's see um, what's a useful one. I don't know this one. Yokai. Okay, it's about the yeah. Both both the emperor and empress went to Parau. Oh yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was a while ago. That was like back in November, wasn't it? Oh, this, is a, this is story of the year. This is top ten stories of the year. That's a big story. Well, yeah. Why? Why is it a big story? Um, because I mean, Palau was one of the 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 bloodiest um oh, I'm theaters. So in, in, in World War Two, uh, where where most Japanese soldiers probably in the highest concentrations lost their lives as the Americans moved through Palau, and then up the Ogasawara Islands to get you know to Iwo Jima at the end of the island chain, to start bombing Japan to get within you know to be heavier fields within bombing range of Japan. Yeah, you know you're smart in that you realize that Japanese still care about this shit. Like I don't know well, why that's even signif significant. It's seventy years old. But also remember as well, the emperor himself was uh, was he a, a primary elementary or middle school age during the war. Mm -hmm. And so there's two things with that. One, this was all like the trauma of his growing up was hearing about these trade, you know, these, oh, these, really? this massive loss of life. Traumatized by this. Plus, of course, there is still the thing which, you know, he never says outright, but the whole thing about, you know, the need of the royal family or the perceived need to atone somewhat. Uh, because, you know, the, the role of the emperor is never really completely clear. I mean, you know, MacArthur said, hey, he was just gardening and had nothing to do with it. Right. But, you know, uh, after World War II, you know, the emperor's been, in the, particularly the new emperor's been very emphatic, very peaceful, right? He, he does all these speeches saying how we must never, you know, we must learn history and all this sort of stuff. And I think this is part of, and he's doing it partly because of Abe and partly because of the revisionists. He's kind of saying, no, 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 we all have to keep very aware of what happened back in that time and not forget, not think it was great, not think it was, you know, um, this was terrible, and we don't need to go through this again. He's actually one of the one of the leading peace voices, and I think going to Palau is very meaningful for that. And this is one of the biggest overseas visits he'd done in a long time, and he's doing it to a country which really had the capacity to host them. Um, yeah. So you know, it was uh, no, I thought it was very cool. No, it is cool. I'm su I'm still surprised it's top ten stories. So, you know, Japan something mm -hmm. that so long. I mean, all all, the, all it is is a visit, right? That's a top ten story. Okay, here's another one. This is kind of a funny one. I know you know this one, uh, the Tokyo Olympics. Yeah. The logo. Well, it wasn't just the logo. It was a stadium. It was a logo. It was, you know, stadium. just about How's the stadium involved. Sorry? Stadium. Yeah, the stadium as well. Well, how? how? Okay, what, so. What's the scandal the, with the stadium? The stadium was supposed to cost, like, uh, was it, I think it was supposed to be like $500 million to, to oh, rebuild the stadium. Awesome. I thought, like, a name or something. I see. It went over budget. And then they found out it was going to be like $2, $2 billion. And then they canceled the whole thing, 
and then they only just at the very end of the year actually um, resubmitted the whole design process and actually what? had two bids worth one billion dollars each, and they just selected one at the very end of the year. Jesus, I didn't hear. I, I completely didn't hear about that at all. All I know is about the logo thing, but. But apparently they've had thousands and thousands of submissions the after the logos. Yeah. Well, actually, so you know, so the whole thing with the logo, of course, is that um, well, there are two things. One, the logo that was selected, there were some. There was already kind of a, def a, a default logo before the official one, before the you know the marketing one for the Coke cans came out. Mm -hmm. um, when the official one came out, everyone kind of went, eh, nobody really liked it. And Ni it was Nichan that did this. It was you know the internet. Japanese internet. First, they, nobody liked the design, and then some very, you know, determined um, private investigator types from Nichan started basically researching into the background of the designer and his company, and um, and trying to figure out how do we end up with this crap logo. And when they looked into his company, they found out two things: one, he's got a history of being very, very close with the company Dentsu, which is basically the the monopoly uh, company which controls all marketing and advertising in Japan. It's basically controlled by one company. Um, very powerful, and, and, and it did actually come up. They actually did an inquiry into how the emblem was selected after all of this disaster, and they found out that there were like three people from Denso on the select committee, and they were just picking their friend pretty much. So the, it was it was kind of rigged. That was well, the first problem. I didn't know the rigged part. Yeah, it was rigged. They found that out at the end of the year. It was more or less they they they, they thought that the selection process was fixed, um, yeah. which it was. Um, but the other problem was is that so when these people who didn't like this logo decided that they were just going to figure out any way to ruin the life of the designer. They started looking at every design project by the design company that this guy ran, okay. and they started finding that, for example, when there was this campaign for making like bags for Santori, they right. found out that half of the designs that were used and approved by his agency were like ripoffs of other designs available on the internet, like complete plagiarized ripoffs. He admitted to that part. Yeah, well, he said it was his subordinates who did it, and he didn't know about it, and he can't watch everybody. But when when they found like so many repeated acts of plagiarism that those companies had to keep taking down, and it just kept making. Plus, of course, there was this Belgian gallery owner or something who said that museum. the yeah. sorry yeah. museum or something, gallery. and he said that the logo looked like his, and so he was claiming plagiarism. And so the whole internet said, let's try to find as many cases of similar designs by his office as possible. And they actually found a lot to the point that the companies had to retract their whole publicity campaigns using his designs. And although it was never proved outright that he did plagiarize the Olympic logo, no one liked it anyway. And with all the other stuff and all the bad publicity, they just basically said, okay, we're canceling the whole thing. And uh, now they're running a new campaign, which they're actually trying to make sure it's going to be very transparent. They're inviting uh, submissions from kids, from people outside of Japan. Yeah, they're had... overwhelmed. This. I think over like 40,000 submissions, maybe more. I don't even remember. But they are whittling down. The committee is getting it down to like 120 to be selected. And I think they're going to publish the 120. And they're actually, it turns out, they just announced this on the news today. There's going to be a referendum, uh, apparently, on the final four logos. Or there's going to be some sort of public vote. Uh, on the final four that get selected for which one the people want. So it's going to be a popular vote, which means I am now suspecting that the Japanese uh, emblem committee is actually plagiarizing the process used to select the new New Zealand flag because that's exactly the same process that we oh had in God. New Zealand for our flag referendum. No, no, first... no, a great piece on what flag you should get. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which I actually, I, the one that came out on top uh, is the one that I support, although now there's going to be a runoff now against between the current flag and the, 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 the top alternative flag in February, but this is exactly the same thing that happened. They, they let anyone come in and vote. They, they got a committee which whittled them down. They got it down to four flags, and they we had a referendum in New Zealand. And I'm pretty sure that the Olympic Committee is flagrantly plagiarizing um, the selection process used by shameless. New Zealand. Hajishirazu, they're, they're shameless. And so, again, it's just going to be completely invalid, whatever they come up with. Mm -hmm. That's you know, I, I do. I want to thank you for being so excited about this story. <laughs> it's an exciting story. How could you not be excited about this story? Seriously, what's yeah. wrong with you? It is number eight on the list. <laughs> number uh, eight. How could it get more exciting than this? My heart won't last past number three. Okinawa. Oh yeah, the Okinawans are build. They're building a, a new base in Okinawa for the Americans. Well, the Okinawans are trying not to build a new base. The central government is building a new base in Okinawa for the Americans. And the Okinawans are like question. That's the that's story number seven. But. Yeah, yeah. Um, how different is that? This is going to be a. I'm, I'm sure it's very different, but I don't actually know how different is that from the Chinese building their little islands. 
Well, for one thing, Okinawa is already an island. Um, the Chinese are building islands that weren't there originally. They're artificial islands that were below the sea, that were below the, the ocean in the first place. Mm -hmm. So what's controversial about what the Chinese are doing is that they're making islands in the middle of the ocean I and saying, hey, look, this is our island, and we now own all the, all the sea, like for 60 square it. miles around it, and you can't fly over it or do anything where, where the Americans and everyone's always been flying over and sailing around these places. And now China's like making a wall in the South China Sea using artificial okay. islands, which they say are their territory. Extend um, their territory. This the Oki, Okinawa has basically got nothing to do with this because this is just land in Okinawa. They are reclaiming over a reef extending out from um, Camp Schwab, which is one of the bigger bases there. And, and the whole idea actually is, extend Japan's reach any. No, well, I, I don't think Japan's planning to shift its maritime border to match the reclamation for the new base. Right. Uh, but that said, I mean, the Americans still think they need to have Marines in Okinawa, right? Because of Kim Jong Un and you know for Taiwan and well, not Australia. just the Americans. I, think, I would say probably a lot of Asia thinks. So. Yeah, I think so. I, I think that's the South, case as well. Maybe South Korea as well. Yeah, uh, that, well, that's it. They're the backup for South Korea. Unfortunately, the burden is all on South Korea for hosting. So mm -hmm. there's this massive base, you know, of Denma in the middle of the main island of Okinawa, which um, hosts the, all the Marines in Okinawa. Uh, the problem is, is that it's super densely populated around it. They had a helicopter crash into a school like 20 years ago there, killed a bunch of people. Um, sometimes Marines don't behave well. Mm -hmm. um, this is another problem. Quite a few rapes. Well, not a, quite a few, a few, a few cases of rape, especially a few rape nasty girl. prominent cases that led to the pressure to shift the base. And so the, the end solution was, uh, that came up was give the land back, move the base away from where it is, but the troops still need to be in Okinawa. So rather than burden, you know, take anyone's land, we'll give the land back, you know, to Japan, but we'll build this new airport over a reef, which is adjacent to a base already. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to take land away from everybody, but we're just going to move them to another part of the island. Um, the thing is, most of the Okinawa were, well, the Okinawa... Well, they're destroying the reef, right? Also. Well, even then, so they've done a big environmental thing to say right. that they'll protect the reef when they build this. Right. Uh, but the Okinawan government, the way that they're trying to block the construction now is by saying that the environmental permits were not validly obtained. And, you know, the, 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 that, that's kind of a sham. That's not really clear if that's the case, but the point is Okinawa is split. It's like 50 pro-base and 50 anti-base because a lot of people in Okinawa rely on the American forces there, of course, for economic purposes. Right. Or they support the Americans, but the people who don't support the Americans really, really don't support the Americans. And right now the government there is anti-American. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, the central government's, you know, saying, yeah, America needs the bases there. Those bases are to defend Japan and the region. And America is saying, you know, mess with our security thing. But, um, you know, the Okinawa prefecture is tired, basically saying it's tired of being walked over by America and the central government, and they're taking the central government to court to try to block construction of this new base. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, you look very... <laughs> I can tell you're not interested. So no, 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 I'm interested in that. Actually, that is the story I'm interested in. And uh, but, uh, but we have, like, you know, five more stories, six more stories. I'll, okay, I'll try to make the next ones more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's actually more interesting to me than the, uh, than the yeah. emperor and the, uh, the logo thing, but... I'm surprised about the $2 billion stadium. I didn't know about that. Okay, well, MRJ. Is Becky on the list? Oh, what? Is Becky on the list? No, not yet. We're not going to talk about Becky. We've got to talk about Becky. Becky? Yeah. Leave her alone. Leave Becky alone. Leave Becky alone. <laughs> yeah, okay, we'll come to that. I know who Becky is, I think. I will explain. We'll Please them. tell me if you know who Becky is in the comments, and we'll talk about it. Everyone's <laughs> commenting. Yeah. But it's be sincere. If you just say, I know who Becky is, or I don't know who Becky is, we'll talk about it. The MRJ first first air flight, uh, first airplane, successful air flight. Big, big oh, yeah. shit. Yes, they built an airliner. Whoop you do. Yes. Next. Oh, really? That's number six. <laughs> That's number six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm assuming I'm assuming that this is going to. Uh, it's important for some reason because it's number six. It's above the other ones. Yeah. Well, it's the first. Uh, it's it's the first the situation. Or what? What's going on? It's the first air like um, major commercial airplane that Japan's built since World War Two. Oh, it was pretty good at building airplanes, and it's actually Mitsubishi. It is the uh, it's Mitsubishi oh, Heavy, but it's the company that built the Zero Fighter. Yes, there are still people in America who will not buy a Mitsubishi because of the Zero Fighters, even today. So there you go, um, which which is bullshit. But fine, I mean they're 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 entitled to do that. But but yeah, so you know it's going to be an airliner, and and, and good on them. Okay, so that's but it. yeah, it's just going to be a short, low cost, you know. Small air, air, air airliner, but it's good for Japan that you know they're getting back into it. But yeah, who cares? The zero thing makes makes more sense now. Of course, yeah. 
but Mitsubishi, of course. Okay. Number number five, uh, Japan won two. I'm reading this in Japanese, so Nish, Nishini Nobel Show. So they won two Nobel Prizes. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, lately they've had a pretty good run with Nobel Prizes lately. Every year they seem to be getting, like, science, especially science Nobel Prizes. The big story is, is that every year um, Murakami, Haru, ha, was it Haru, Harumi, what's his name? The, Murakami, know, Murakami, the, the, the writer, the author. The writer. Um, Norway and Woods guy. Yeah, it's becoming like a, tra a tradition that he gets nominated and, and loses every single year. It's like, you know, their actual, like, NHK starts to coverage or cover all the book clubs that uh, meet and, and look for him to fail every year now. <laughs> they get together? Yeah, they do. They, no one expects him to win anymore. They just get together and have a few drinks. All right. Yeah. Okay. Haruki, uh, there we go. Haruki Murakami. Oh, yes. Haruki, Haruki, thank you. Yeah, but yeah, Japan, yeah, rocking the, uh, the, the Nobel Prizes. That good? I think he's good, but I don't know if he's like Nobel yeah, Prize. I, I, he's like a yeah. good Stephen King, like when Stephen King writes, uh, you know, Stand By Me type of books, you know, like a, that oh, look, yeah. maybe. But. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Eighteen-year-old, what is this? Eighteen-year-old. Oh, yeah. Eight kids who are eighteen years old and above can now vote. Yes, yes, I and soon they'll that. be also liable to be tried as criminal uh, as adult criminals. But uh, yes, they got the right to vote. Oh, <laughs> that's a double punch, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, there, there is a certain uh, Michael Kuchek uh, on Twitter who's a, who's a very knowledgeable commentator who thinks that the whole vote thing is just a sham cover for the real intent, which is of the old. The elderly people in the LDP who are scared of young people to want to make uh, them criminally liable because you have all these murder cases where they're 18 year olds and 19 year olds really? and they get treated as uh, juveniles. Basically, you know, if you if you're 19 years old, 19 and a half, and you murder your boss at work, mm -hmm. um, you go to juvie <laughs> and you come out without a criminal record and you get out after a few years. So you know, America, if you're 14, you go to yeah, you're they give you the electric chair. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yes, it's slightly different. Um, so yeah, they're lowering it to eighteen. But yes, so in the in the election, which will happen this year, possibly a double um, of both house election this year. Mm -hmm. um, yes, eighteen year olds will oh, be able to vote. I'm sorry, if I don't show Hiko, I will not believe he exists. Okay, he does exist. There he is. I yeah. had you all for a while. So. You're gonna lose ratings as soon as they start seeing my face. A massive disappointment. You see shock waves uh, go through. How can I make it alternate? Is there a button to click somewhere? Yeah, you just have to not click on either you or me. If you don't click, it will right. automatically switch oh, yeah. according to the voice. Let me oh, try. Yeah. Oh, I'm talking. It's not, it's not changing. What should I do? Oh, you have to wait on the screen. No, 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 no. You won't see it on your screen. It's on the YouTube, the output to YouTube. Wait, you've been doing this for like five years. You, you no, don't know how this no. works? No, it switches on this. It switches on this too, on our Hangout. Really? Pretty sure. No, no, no. If you click on me, it'll show me. And if you don't click on me, it'll just show you. But the output will switch according to our voices, which means it will switch. I don't think um, I ever pay attention to the output. That's why I just look at really. That's cool. how it works. That's how that's how YouTube yeah. Hangouts work. <laughs> so the only so, the, so if you want to show me, another video about it. Yeah. So if you wanted to show me, you have Andy to. Andy Paulini, I'm not drunk. You guys are lightweights. If you think one drink means you're drunk, you guys are lightweights. Seriously. You have to not click on yourself, and you have to be quiet. I just don't know. <laughs> I'm just dumb. I'm not dumb. I'm not drunk. I'm just dumb. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. You, you're dumb. You didn't I'm know. Just, that. I'm explaining how, how how this thing works. Okay. So, <laughs> I'd rather people think I'm dumb than drunk. Is that a, is that smart? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Ready? Next one. Yeah. So, that's okay. Yanfu. Big story. Yanfu. Yeah. Um, Nikan Ketchaku. You take it. You run with it. Take the ball. What do you know about this story? I did. The, I did the. I did a video on these three. Okay. So, okay. so 1995, I believe the Japanese paid off the Koreans, and they established. Oh, they paid them off in 65. In 55. 65. 65. Yeah. Exactly 50 years ago this year. Oh really? They, they paid 800 100 billion dollars to South Korea and signed a treaty with South Korea, saying that the treaty would be the final. Um, no, the final ink, sorry, no, 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 no. 65, 1965. So Korea and Japan didn't have any diplomatic oh, relations. That's when they reestablished ties, right? And and in that that treaty establishing ties, Japan paid eight hundred million dollars, and they were, and that was in, in settlement and reparation for all claims by all South Korean citizens and South Korean government against Japan. And the Japanese uh, government requested that Korea use the money to, yes. to settle individual claims with South Koreans. And they said, sure, we'll do that. Yeah, trust us. Um, the South Koreans, for their part, the, the father of the current president was the uh, president who executed uh, the, the uh, agreement. And uh, they kept the agreement secret from the Korean people. And they took the uh, Japanese request under advisement, but decided never to settle in independent claims or even tell the, the Korean people that they had actually been paid for them. Um, 
and so then Korea became democratic in 1989 and uh, then it was basically the Asahi was the lead in, in, in kind of shedding light on the on the whole comfort woman thing in the uh, like 1992 93 mostly based on the false testimony of one well that's what the right wing says i mean you know a bunch of testimonies sort of came out including some ones which were discredited and some by the by women who said that they were comfort women and said whatever but this kind of became a big thing with with the whole democratization you know people said we have to fix relations with japan because we've been told that japan never fixed these issues right. and so when the socialists came into power briefly in 1995 the first thing that they wanted to do was um give korea what they wanted which was to one give them a full apology from the Prime Minister of Japan, at which they did. They did a big statement admitting to the whole comfort with thing and apologizing. And they also uh, set up a, a payment fund. The problem was, is that under international law, Japan had already paid the reparations. So the problem was if that if the government paid again they would be admitting that the last payment wasn't the reparation. So it means that not just the comfort women, everybody in Korea would be able to make new claims because Japan would be admitting that the last payment wasn't um, final. So in order to get around that problem, what the Japanese government did was they leveraged a bunch of companies and a bunch of kind of quasi-government things to set up this kind of separate fund that wasn't run by the government, but it would give like a, an extra payment for the comfort women so that they could get paid and they could get the compensation that the Korean government didn't give them. So they set up a fund to pay the women and they gave them another apology. And the whole deal at the time was, was that that apology was supposed to close the comfort woman issue, which of course, as we know, is what it did. Yeah, we never heard about the comfort woman again after after 1995 because the issue was closed as it was supposed to be. Um, the problem was, of course, uh, many people refused to accept the apology. Um, they said it was insufficient. They said that the money had to come from the Japanese government. They wouldn't take the, 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 the Asian Women's Fund payment. Mm -hmm. And this got worse and worse and worse until actually it was like in 2003 or 2004 or something like that. Some years ago anyway, the, apparently the Korean Supreme Court said that... Um, what was it that, that, that basically the Korean government, which at that point, up, up until that point, had not supported the comfort women too loudly because, you know, they, they had this deal with the Japanese government. Right. The Korean yeah, Supreme they, Court. They got paid off, right? Well, that's right. They, they, they actually made a ruling for this. Uh, this comfort woman sued the Korean government, and the, 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 the Supreme Court said that the Korean government, because this was so unconscionable, what happened to these women, the Korean government had an obligation to support the women in campaigning against Japan. And so it was because of the Korean courts telling the government that even though you got paid off, it's unconscionable that you're not supporting these women, that they had to change their whole policy. And they, 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 so the Korean government started saying, hey, we need another payout because, you know, right. uh, help us out here. And so this year is the 50th anniversary of relations between Korea and Japan established by a settlement of these very issues. Wow. Um, and they said, hey, can you give us some more money? And so basically uh, Abe, who started the year in January saying, launching an investigation into the reason that there was a 1995 apology because the whole LDP hated that there was an apology and wanted to undo it. Right, right. He started out being against it. At the end of the year, he actually gave the clearest, well, the deal made at the end of the year, yes. the clearest, most unequivocal, you know, matter puts it to rest forever well the, the clearest apology ever given plus a promise of direct payment from the japanese government on a fixed amount on the agree on the basis that it's final and on the basis that they move the uh the little girl statue from out front of the uh japanese embassy in korea oh, oh, is the statue included in that i didn't know that part it's not officially included mm. but the, the problem is, is that the little statue was put up by an ngo not by the korean government oh. so the korean government has to ask the ngo to move it mm. <laughs> Um, and so they couldn't put that in the deal, but the, Korea, the Japanese government said, we're going to do all of this for you, but you need to put pressure, you, you need to make that happen. Mm. And the, of course, that's really sensitive in Korea. So when everyone went back to Japan and Korea after this deal was done, mm. and the, the Japanese minister said to the press, oh yeah, and we said they have to move that, that girl statue because that really pisses us off. That, that outraged all the Koreans on the other side, and you have all these angry comfort women going to the foreign ministry saying, "You collaborators, you traitors, that you that you collaborated with the with the Japanese to make this deal behind our backs and sell us out." And you're talking about the 1965 deal. No, no, no. I'm talking about the, the deal the that new, happened in December. The new um, deal as well. Yeah, a bunch of the. I read. I read even before this deal that 70 percent of the Koreans were were agreed that the Korean government had screwed them over by not giving the comfort women money from the 1965 deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was supposed to settle that, and this would give them money. But um, apparently at this point, at the moment, the latest poll is of the remaining 45 uh, comfort women who are alive. 45? Um, we died since last week because there were 47 last week. 
Was it 47? Maybe, maybe that's a number. I don't know. Um, I'm just joking, but anyway. But I mean, no, but the, the, I read 47. It's not, it's not a big yeah. point. I love that number. Uh, that, so, you know what that is? I figured it out. It's like it's like um, it comes out to over, I think three hundred thousand dollars each. Something, something like, like that. Something like that. Right? Yeah. So when the American government apologized to the Japanese interned mm. prisoners, yeah, even like five dollars, ten thousand dollars each. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. Nothing. Well, that's it. They weren't. Oh, well, they got a good deal. Wow. Well. <laughs> well, they got raped too, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're kind of different things. Um, but in spite of saying they got a good deal, apparently the, the percentage on some recent poll of those remaining comfort women, sixty percent of them reject the deal as being insufficient. They don't know. Yeah, and not only that, but there was actually this viral video of one of the comfort women going, really? going to the foreign ministry and going and talking. You know, the foreign ministry was inviting the comfort women in to brief them about what the deal is. Mm -hmm. And uh, with all these cameras around, all these supporters around, this woman is just there ripping shit out of this bureaucrat there, Say, how could you do this to us? It's like, you've killed me twice. It's like, you're a traitor, you're a collaborator, just like in World War II. Make, you know, make jokes about, the, it is a pretty serious matter getting raped and everything. But. Yeah, no, and, and, and you know, but this woman was saying that basically, um, because the Korean government did this deal with Japan behind their backs and, and not telling them about the contents of this deal, so none you know, of the Korean women were involved in this deal in the negotiations. Well, so that's what this woman was saying, mm -hmm. and a lot of people are saying, "Well, how could they have made a deal for these comfort women without even asking them if they were okay with the deal?" The the Korean yeah. Foreign Ministry, which has been getting a lot of shit for this, came back with last week. They released a public statement against the comfort women, what? saying, "Saying last year." We consulted with them 15 times on the status of the secret negotiations, and they were fully informed. <laughs> so now the Korean foreign ministry is now starting to, to get into a fight with the old ladies, um, which never looks good. <laughs> so, you know, Korea itself is kind of ripping itself up. The, the left wing is saying this deal is a complete betrayal of the Korean people, and the right wing, the people who support the government, are saying, well, it's, it's the best deal that we're going to get. And, you know, they wanted to get a deal while these women are alive and during the 50th anniversary, and, and Japan's made a good faith effort. Mm -hmm. um, but now, now this is like inside Korea. Getting Abe to apologize, I think it's a big deal. It is a big deal. I mean, no one would have, if you had told me in January that Abi was going to give an apology like this or this sort of a deal at the end of the year, no, no one would have believed you. <laughs> I, would, no, I would never would have believed that myself. But the point, the point is, is that um, uh, Jamie Galbraith says earthquake, but I didn't feel it where I am anyway. I don't know where you are. Um, so the point is um, that, uh, yeah, I mean, huge, huge steps were made. But the fact is, I, I think those people who didn't take this deal wouldn't take any deal. I think that's the thing. I don't. I don't think that the issue can really be resolved. If 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 th if this can't resolve it, it can't be resolved. I think that's it. No, um, no you're right. And yeah. to be fair, that's their right if they don't want to accept it. You know. Exactly. I mean, you know, exactly. They don't have to like the deal, do they? I mean, you know, you don't have to say to them, "Well, now you're being unreasonable." Well, you know, they did get raped for five years. <laughs> yeah, they're entitled to hold a grudge. I think you know. Oh. But, um, but the question is, someone you know, raped me for five years, and then seventy years later, or what? It's seventy years later, and someone offered me uh, three hundred thousand dollars. I don't know. Be like, well, what's, you know, what's the point now? Well, I mean, it's better than a kick what in the pants. What am I pot. gonna do? Yeah, but what are you gonna do when you're seventy years old? And you seventy? Not seventy. They're like ninety now. You know. Yeah. So you know, uh, and this is what they're also saying. It's not about the money. It's about that they want to see more or less a surrender of some sorts by Japan on this. They actually want to see a, you know, they want to see. Okay, we surrender. You win the war. Pretty much. I mean, that's pretty much the rhetoric. I've been following the, the post-deal rhetoric in, in Korea and the people who are criticizing the deal. And, and I saw a, a thing on Korea Bang, which summarizes the internet sites in Korea and was saying the right-wing sites were complaining. Korea, I know China Bang. I didn't know there's a Korea Bang. Uh, there's China Smack, Korea China Bang, Smack, and yeah. Japan Crush. And um, uh, so, company? so I th yeah, I think so. They're all translated by the same company. That's funny. Apparently, they were translating a right-wing site, but these right-wing columnists were complaining about the left-wingers who were criticizing the deal. And they were saying, Abe could have come to Korea and committed ritual suicide in the middle of Kwanghaemlin Square, and you guys still wouldn't be happy. <laughs> uh, you know, they were kind of putting it in extreme terms, but they were just kind of saying, look, you know, this is, you're just criticizing this for the sake of criticizing it. And maybe that's true, but that's just, you know how it is and what this means is is that even if this deal goes through and it works out it means that when the current government loses power and the opposition comes into power they're going to say that deal doesn't count just like in the past so it's never going to close it's yeah. never going to get resolved yeah. I, I said the same thing it's never going to they're never going to it's never going to be over yeah 
Well, it'll be brought up again. And why, why give it up? You know, I mean, it's worked so well in the past. Well, I mean, you know, and a big part of the national identity, the nationalism is built up on the fact that they are the people, they are the survivors who, you know, came back and built the country after it was destroyed by Japan. And, you know, the, the whole idea of how much, I mean, these people are symbols, human living symbols of the way that Korea was abused and victimized by the Japan colonial period, which is what the whole national psyche is built on over there. So to take that away from them, it's like you're taking away their status as sort of national treasure status if you say that their issue is settled. Yeah. And that's more yeah well i mean of course they are but you know but you can see how you could how you kind of without consulting with them how you kind of taking away their whole reason for kind of you know um, they're heroes i mean the, the survivors are heroes of sorts as they are by by being these kind of victims of this huge injustice that's not been resolved right um so i can kind of imagine how it'd be really tough to let go so um uh, ahmed usui says it won't be over till those ladies pass away yeah, and unfortunately, the fact that they'll pass away not accepting a resolution means it'll go beyond that as well. Uh, and that's the problem, and that's what everyone wants to avoid. He never accepted the apology. Okay. Yeah, I mean, okay, you know, that's, number, that's number three. Yeah, number three. Uh, it gets big. was pretty big, but number two, can you guess number two, number one? No. Not number maybe. two were the, the, um, the, the Sendai... Here's a weird. Here's a weird thing. The, the nuclear reactor known as Sendai was restarted. Ah, uh, yeah, which is the kanji is nothing like Sendai, but the one in right. Kagoshima, right? Right, which is in Kyushu, but okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I could, yeah, I couldn't fool you on that one. Yeah, so that's that's a big one, and they're thinking about restarting all 23 uh, nuclear reactors here in Japan. Well, as soon as they meet the world's highest nuclear safety standards that no nuclear power plant in history has ever met, but if they meet them, yeah, they'll restart them as soon as possible. Yeah, and one? some people are trying to fast track that, and they are looking to get permission to restart without meeting all the criteria yet um but <laughs> amy, yeah amy wants us to talk about the north korea having a nuclear bomb we talked about that yeah then we talked about that in about we talked hour. about that you know we, we are, it's a hydrogen bomb for ants that's what i said let me just hold this up for him again the english one in case you missed it this is the english version right yeah it's like a new death star okay there we go we already talked about this exactly like the last three death stars Okay. Why don't you ask us to talk about Becky now? Okay. And number one, of course, was the, the security treaty was uh, revised and passed. And now it's, oh, yeah. Japan can have war. Japan has war again, so they can fight alongside their allies. In case not, their not exactly. Not exactly. Japan now has the legal ability to defend American forces in Japan That's if they get attacked. Thing. They can fight along. Well, okay, defend. Okay, I'll defend. A lot. So they, can come, they can come to help if if there are American forces in Japan that are like get attacked oh, by not, China. Not only in Japan. What about in other countries? In other countries too. It can oh, extend yeah. to other countries, but there has to be in the region around Japan. It's kind of the, the way it's defined in the law. But then they ask them, "What does a region around Japan mean?" And the government said, "Well, anywhere that Japan has a national interest." Yeah. So they said, like the Persian Gulf. Well, it could, <laughs> but we don't think anything's going to happen in the Persian Gulf. That was literally the answer that they gave. Really? Yes. That Japan was, has such that a good the, relationship with the Iranians. Well, that, that, which is also true, but the, this is the thing. It doesn't matter if Japan has a good relationship with the Iranians. The current treaty will allow Japan to fight to defend America wherever it has problem in an area in a sphere that Japan has a national interest, which mm. it does in the Persian Gulf. So Japan could get into a war with Iran in the Persian Gulf um, if Iran attacks America, attacks an American ship there, which of course is never going to happen, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, well, yeah, well, I, I don't think so. But who knows? Well, it could happen. Um, but, 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 but the key point, the purpose, the key purpose of the treaty was until now. And this sounds crazy. We we're just talking before about how those troops in Okinawa are there to defend Japan. But technically, right now, legally, if Ch if China attacked um, Camp Schwab in Okinawa, if they if they militarily attacked it, it'd be illegal for the Japanese self defense forces to come to the defense of those American forces if it was only the Americans being attacked. Wait a minute. Even if, hmm? You mean now or before? Now. Well, before the law. Before, before the law. The, okay, okay, okay. Before the law. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, so now they can, right? Now they can. Now they can. Well, they can, except everyone's pretty much unanimously agreed that the law is, uh, is, anti -con is unconstitutional and invalid, um, that they shouldn't be allowed to defend. Uh, they... they the, the, the nominal notion that Japan has only allowed uh, a military for the purpose of self-defense mm -hmm. uh, shouldn't extend. Japan's changed that definition to say self-defense can include defending our allies mm -hmm. if they're helping to defend us. Right. But everyone's unanimous. The, there's nothing in the Constitution to say that we can defend America or we can, we can get into a war for the sake of protecting Americans. And everyone's pretty sure that if this gets challenged in court, it's going to get struck down. 
the thing is, it's complete common sense. The law is complete common sense. It's crazy that Japan would not be able to defend um, American yeah. forces in Japan that are there to defend it. But that, and it's that funny that Americans that. criticize Japan on this when they actually forced that into the Constitution. Yes, that is kind of ironic, isn't it? Uh, well, you know, they let some university students write the Constitution on a one-week deadline, and that's what they got, right? And they were, you know, right. American right. university students, and good on them for being idealists, but exactly, this is a problem that America made for itself. But... Um, yeah, America and, and you know Japan hasn't had any amendments to the Constitution since it was since the Americans imposed it in 1953 or whatever. Which None? is funny. None. Not, really? It hasn't been amended not once. Um, sure? Not even not even one for allowing everyone to have guns. You know, which you know Japan is like way overdue for. I know. How can we defend ourselves, right? Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, the founding fathers. All the actors Japan, having guns. I mean, Jesus. That's what they wanted. They wanted everyone to have guns. You know, that's what that's what constitutions are for. To make sure everybody <laughs> has weapons. Mm. Uh, well, that's that's pretty much. A, that's but, but pretty the number one story, story of 2016. Let's talk about the number one story of 2016 because Becky? I'm talking about Becky. Oh come on! Uh, it's a long story. She went out with some singer. And she said she she did, didn't know he was married, and she apologized. And, but I will tell you one thing that was very interesting. Yeah. What he called Orion, her talent agency. Yeah. Right, released a video yeah. with her speech. Have you seen it? I haven't seen it, although I've heard it was kind of a PR disaster. But it's it's genius because they released it. So they own, you know, they, they're the ones who released it themselves. But it's so full of people taking cameras, you know, they, they've got the mic in the back and you can hear all the camera shutters going off oh. almost the whole speech. You can barely hear her. Yeah. It's four and a half, four minutes and 50 seconds or so. And it's, you, you can't hear anything, but it's out there. Yeah. Right. So if anyone else puts out a video, they can, they can claim copyright and take it down, but you can't hear anything. So it's basically a waste. It just it just shows that she's. You can hear her saying, you know, Fukami or 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 what is it? Owabi. Yeah, Fukaku Owabi. Fukaku Owabi. Moshiagimas. Moshiagimas. Yeah, that one. Yeah. You can tell I apologize a lot. <laughs> um, you can hear her saying that, and you can tell it's an apology, but you can't hear anything. Like her introduce. Some guy comes out and introduces her. Can't hear anything he's saying at all. Yeah. You can barely hear it, but it's, my students said, "Leave her alone." All my students say, "We don't know if it's true. Leave her alone." We feel they feel sorry for her. Yeah, and, and you know, this, this, there's a pattern here, and people quick to point out this isn't just a pattern for Japan, mm -hmm. but there was um, like a newsreader, um, Mona something uh, Yamamoto or something, and they, you know, they're like famous newscasters or famous, you know, stars, mm -hmm. and there's this pattern that it turns out, for example, that they had an affair. They were captured by a, uh, one of the salacious weekly magazines going off to a love hotel, for example, with a, with a married baseball player or with a married TV star or producer. Right. And when this comes out, all of the condemnation uniformly goes towards the single lonely TV star, mm -hmm. and somehow the married dude who who picked up <laughs> this uh, the, this young TV star and took her to a love hotel is like silence. <laughs> it's, it's almost like he's a victim. Of, well, those single women are always trying to trick me. He called. I mean, what if I, I, what, if I what if I you know fall down one day and fall into someone's arms? And, well, I was just saying. I mean, it, it is pretty scary yeah. as as, as a. As a as, a mar as married men, you know, we have to be careful. It's pretty scary to think that there are attractive, single, lonely TV stars out there who might want to just have their way with us and make us victims. Uh, but, you know, I mean, granted, she's not in the clear. Nobody's in the clear in an adultery situation. But you've got to say, if anyone's really done something really wrong, it's more the person who's married and has a family than the single person, I would say. Right. Yeah. Um, now... But, that being said, I interviewed three. The reason I'm kind of avoiding this topic is I've got a video coming out right after this. And yeah. I interviewed three housewives. You dated Becky. <laughs> I interviewed three housewives and they told me they told us what they thought about uh, oh, married to see that. So I'm actually still editing that, but it'll, it's going to be very minor editing. It's just going to be. You should get that out really fast. And I'm about to. I'm, I'm, after this, so. I'm about to crush you. That video is going to get more views than your opus, which I'm about to watch after this video. <laughs> If you guys haven't seen my opus, it's called Ocho, 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 Bo, I forgot what it's called. What's it called? Ocho, 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 And it took me about 12 hours to edit. And, and you're going to edit this new one about Becky for three minutes and it's going to get more views. Yeah, sorry. Exactly. I was talking to, I was talking to Unrested about this. It's like we work our asses up editing a video and it gets, you know, no views or very few views. And then you yeah. just put up something that's, you know, nothing. Some some 
cheap shot uh, at gossip, and then boom. Have you seen the uh, the, the 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 ad for that translation? This yes. Translation? Oh my god, that's embarrassing. Isn't that in all the millions of things that things they could have done with that contraption? Well, but you know what? We we're here talking about it. I mean, obviously, it was, it was done by an internet startup. Obviously, they decided to go for the shock. You oh, know, yeah. grab attention with a controversial video tactic. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, it worked. Everyone's bitching about it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like to joke that uh, Julius is Julian LeBlanc's latest uh, <laughs> from his tech portfolio. <laughs> I mean, I, I think that it only makes sense if the next product they release is a, is a multilingual rape whistle. <laughs> you just blow the whistle and it says, "Help me! I'm being raped in ten languages." <laughs> it's kind of. I mean, that, that video is pretty much. A, I'm sure it's acted. I'm sure it's staged, but it's a sexual assault. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's one guy running away from this guy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, that, that's something that a, a gentleman like you would normally turn on your GoPro camera and go and tackle the guy, right? Yeah, well, tackle, I don't know, but I'd, be, I'd get in his face. Uh, yeah, I, I think the police would be totally entitled to go full Rodney King on, uh, on a person in that situation. Well, in Japan, they would never do that. Well, they would no. probably, probably would. laugh and they would probably be charmed by the, by the contraption as he, speaks in, as he speaks Japanese with them. That thing is pretty cool. You gotta admit, it is pretty cool. Um, just please don't use it to sexually assault people. That's, yeah. that's the only. Totally agree with you. Yeah. Um, oh, I just lost my headphones. Hang on a <laughs> don't like right. to talk If anyone is in Nagoya next Friday night, uh, there's a stand-up show. I'll be doing a little stand-up. I do stand-up every uh, month and a half or so, every two months or so. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll be having another one. If anyone's curious. Um, Check out my Facebook or something. I'll try to put a link or, or tw tweet it out. Yeah. But uh, that's about it. Next week we have a show on Hiko Simon's channel. Uh, yep. Right? Is that, is that correct? It would be my turn next week. And uh, who, are we going to get uh, Amadolfo? Are we going to get uh, Jake Norton? Or who are we going to get on? Amadolfo's got a new machine, a new con computer, so he's ready to go. Yep. There's also John, uh, Jake, not John, Jake Knowlton. Right. So he's, uh, he's quite. So we're going to sort of making big changes in his life, which I think would be interesting to people who are. Yeah, I saw that moving away from Guma. That's going to be it's going to be a big deal. So he well, we quit his job and is moving to Tokyo, which is yeah. pretty brazen, or pretty brave. So good for him. Uh, we could talk to him too, but uh, but but we'll we'll figure that out. So check out, we'll figure it out. watch this space. Watch yeah, watch it. Well, and also follow us on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll make sure. By the way, um, and for people interested, um, the first episode of my new series with uh, Rochelle Cop, uh, Japan oh. Business Time. Uh, went live this week every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Uh, for the next eight weeks. You're going to have uh, new episodes, and the episodes are all, are all topics uh, based on topic requests from the comments of the first series. So they're all, comments, they're all topics by commenters okay. uh, on, on okay. Japanese I'll business stuff. I'll open that up right now. Yeah. Business time with Rochelle. Japan business always, time with Rochelle Kopp. Rochelle, Rochelle. Rochelle Kopp is basically, she, she's the uh, CEO and founder of um, Japan Intercultural Business uh, Japan Intercultural Consulting, which is basically a consulting company that helps um, companies manage Japan versus anything other than Japan business cultural issues. Uh, so she's basically like she's got a PhD in the subject. She's a, she's the world probable foremost authority on doing international business involving Japanese companies. Okay. Uh, so, so yeah, and hand the meishi properly. Yeah, well, starting with that, but also what to do when your when your bacho is like uh, reading porno mags in the cafeteria, or the the American guy is you know shouting all the Amer all the Japanese down, or you know how to how to deal with those cultural those wacky cultural situations that happen. Uh, she is the world foremost authority on um, on those problems and how to solve them. Okay. It's a great series. I, anyway. I, got it, I got it open right now. And oh, I, you shot it. You shot it at the Tokyo, uh, the Tokyo YouTube. Uh, the indeed. Space. Happy 2016. Um, yeah. See you guys all again soon. Peace out, everyone. Thanks oh, for watching. Good thanks. night.